Hello everybody. Hello. Welcome on in. It's lovely to see you all. Um, oh, I'd better quick, quickly catch up on the chat. It started before I got here. So hello Phil. Hello Rhonda. Hello Caroline. Hello Emma. Hello Sylv. Hello Terry. Um, hello Kim. Hello Kirsty. And he I, don't, I can't remember if I said hello to Caroline. I'm pretty sure I did. But hello to Caroline again anyway, even if I didn't. Um, how I hope you're all doing really, really well this evening. So, um, as you can... Oh, and evening odds, you've just dropped in as I, as I was finishing up saying hello to everybody. So, hello, sweetheart. I hope you're well. Um, so, tonight I'm going to be working with some of the enchanted, um, the enchanted ocean items that came from Crafter's Companion. Well, that, that's, that is coming from Crafter's Companion, I should say. Um, I haven't made uh, anything ready. Uh, because I'm going to be making a shadow box this evening. So I've got my tonic um, tailored frame in tranquility. So we're going to be cutting four of those out and making up the bars and sticking those together. And I've also got some cardstock down to be able to do... We're going to do some ink blending with the uh, new um, stencils that have come. Yes, Aaron's had a promotion. Isn't he lucky with his little, um, whatever that is, uh, I can't remember what it's called, it's a wrench or something isn't it? So we're going to use some of these stencils, I'm not sure exactly which ones, but we're going to use some of them that's for sure. Um, there's some really nice ones, I was thinking of definitely using that one anyway. Doing a nice under the sea theme, a scene. And you'll see as well that I have kind of deviated away from the oxides this evening. And I'm going to be using the actual distress inks. Hello Tracy, thank you for being here my lovely, I really appreciate it, how are you doing? Um, oh, let's just quickly pop those away. Hello Simon, thank you for being here lovely, I really appreciate it. Oh, I don't know what, I'm glad your cough's getting better. I don't know what I'm doing with it, oh it's getting caught on that. Little, because they're fiddly bits, aren't they? Right, so I'm just going to set these bits to the side for the moment. Um, and you know, like I said, I've kind of deviated away from the um, distress oxides, and we're actually going to use the distress inks for this. Uh, so for the water in the background of what we're going to be doing, I've chosen evergreen bow, prize, prize ribbon, and mermaid lagoon for that. Hello Lou, hello Lou Reed. I think you're a new face, aren't you? It's lovely to see you here. Um, I haven't tried the SVG files yet, Phil. Um, they are on my list of things to do. I've been a bit of a busy bee. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I'm just going to use some 300 GSM cardstock to cut out the... Um... Oh, it's the little lesbian. Ah, you're not a new face. <laughs> it's the little lesbian. Oh, that's hilarious. Um, so I've got some 300 GSM plain white cardstock. And all I'm going to do is use my Grand Espresso and Hickory Reef Smoke Distress Inks on this to give it an like an aged look. Because I want it to look aged and maritimey and all that kind of stuff. I can't believe she just announced herself, she just announced herself as the little lesbian. It's hilarious. <laughs> absolutely hilarious hello lynn welcome on in my lovely i hope you're doing well now normally i would literally just cut that i would just cut it as it is but because i'm doing this nautical theme i really want to use this emboss plate so all i'm going to do is just line that up in there as best as i can and i'm just going to tape it across so that it it doesn't doesn't move it's the last lesbian hey hello rachel thank you for being here lovely it's the lady lesbian <laughs> oh bless you for being here i hope um i hope you've got marge with you she'd be pleased to see me won't she it's not like she can't see me at all today <laughs> 
It's the best last <laughs> bit. Hilarious. If you can hear any sounds like in a war zone, oh yeah, well that's Aaron playing Hogwarts Legacy, isn't it? Standard. Right. So I'm just getting my um, my plates out now. I think we've spoken about these before. These are craft first plates, in case you were wondering. Um, these can be purchased on the Amazon and are great replacements for the Gemini plates. I mean, I battered this. I've battered this, and I mean, it's a little bit wibbly. It's only a little bit wibbly, but I have proper battered it. And, you know, it's still not really gone wrong. But I battered it with um, oh, what multimedia dies, because I didn't know you were meant to to use uh what you call it on him metal plates and i didn't have the right metal plates to do it so right let's just build up the sandy witch for going through the machuan wowzers trousers right so i'm just going to stick this down to the cardstock because obviously we don't want it jumping about whilst it's in the machine and we're going to cut four of these out um i I, I was going to pre-make them and then I kind of thought I'm really robbing it from you to be able to show you how to do it properly so I just thought you know what I'm just going to make all four of them on stream uh <laughs> Lucky Aaron. <laughs> he is lucky. I'm glad you're telling him because he doesn't believe it when I tell him. Right, so there we go. And we've got that lovely. And you can see where it's made the little impressions. You'll see it better when I ink it up. So we're just going to do that a few more times. Hello, Corinne. Thank you so much for being here, my lovely. Oh, my God. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate your presence, like seriously. Um, this evening, we are making a um, Under the Sea shadow box using the Tonic uh, Tailored Frame Tranquility. And we're going to be also using um, the Enchanted Ocean Collection that is due to launch on Wednesday at CC. Um, I know it's already been out on HSN and QVC. I was, you know, really lucky uh, when I went to the store on Saturday and they happened to have it on a special super secret thing. I don't know. Oh, I'm so glad you... Oh, you're such a bloody angel, seriously. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Right, oh, I should have really a flip, flip and rotate that because I want, I'm trying to level the plates back out. Mum's got you on the big TV. Oh, my God, I'm on the big teller. <laughs> You've got a big gay on the big telly. <laughs> Oh, hello, Stephanie. Thank you for being here, my lovely. How are you doing? I, I'm, I'm really hoping you're well. I haven't seen... I, I can't remember if you were here on, on, on any of the recent lives, but just in case you, you haven't been here, I hope you're okay. Um, I'm just going to finish off doing this. Little lesbian watching the big game. <laughs> wow. Worst things have been known to happen at sea, haven't they? Crafting bear, yep. Yeah. Crafting bear. Crafting bear sat in the craft room on a chair. <laughs> Let's uh, not finish that song, shall we? I do love it. It's hilarious. <laughs> Sounds new show for the TV. It certainly does, Caroline. <laughs> I don't think I'm safe for television, though. Not real telly. I mean, it's all right if you plonk me on a craft and I want to... Or, or something like that. But I genuinely don't think I'm safe to go on the normal telly. You know what I mean? I'd end up saying one of the naughty words. You know, the naughty words that they don't want you to say on telly. 
I'd probably end up saying several of them and getting myself into all sorts of trouble. <laughs> They'll never have me back. <laughs> right, I'm just going to take that off of there. Yes, I do love the singing, don't I? I love the singing. It's my kind of thing. Um, I was out with some friends earlier on, actually. I was out with the little lesbian, the, the, the uh, lady lesbian and the mother goose. Um, and I, I can't remember what song it was, but literally we were just talking about something and I started, I, I just went off into a tangent of singing. And it's a thing that I kind of do. And I, I've never really known why. Do you have... I do have a set of fabric plates now, Rhonda. But at the time I ruined these plates, I didn't. Because <laughs> I wasn't aware. It was when I first... I think it was like way back when I first got my first Gemini. And the whole thing... George Carlin did a skit with seven words you can't say on TV. <laughs> it was ABBA. Oh yes, it was ABBA, wasn't it? Oh God, what was it? Oh, I can't remember which ABBA song it was. I know it was definitely ABBA. Oh my god. Is that opposed to the man lesbian? Yes, that is Hannah. There are plenty... Oh, stickle bricks. I didn't know. Well, a big welcome on in to anyone who hasn't been here before. And please do subscribe if you're not. Um, and I hope you enjoy my content. I'm really grateful for you guys being here. It's really, um, it's a really, you know, it's a big kind of positive thing for me. So I'm, I'm really grateful for you guys being here. Um, I think I'm just going to leave that taped in there because there's no point in taking it off. Oh, was it water? No, it wasn't Waterloo, was it? Mum asked, did you have a nana? Yes, I did. And I got rudely awoken from my nana nap. I don't know if it happens to you guys, but it kind of gets to around about three o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> Between between one and three, and then you just kind of get just a little bit tired, didn't you? <laughs> just, just a little bit tired. And then you have to have the the age of the nana nap. My friend has gone to get dessert, so I thought, oh, thank you for popping in. Not cra crafting queen. Oh, God, where do I go with that? Because I'm, I'm not young and sweet. Um, crafting queen, middle-aged and gay. And a bit of a man to do to do to do. <laughs> right. All I'm going to do is just be really naughty, and I'm just going to drag my ink across. I'm not bothered about how this is going to look because I want it to have that aged effect. And I don't really necessarily need to be doing the whole thing. But I'm going to do the whole thing because I kind of want it to look kind of throughout. So I'm just going to just layer that up because I don't want it to kind of look like any one colour. And you can see how by doing that it's giving it that kind of aged wood And I'm just going to do the same again with all of them. So I'm just going to run my, my pad across. I may have to get a re for this by the time I've finished. I should have made... Uh, crafting Queen mixing sauce with the Vaseline! <laughs> Not quite mobility Hi Babs, welcome on in lovely. Oh, I'm so glad it's now time for you to relax. Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> Crafting queen. Oh my, well welcome on in to everybody who is here. I really do appreciate you being here. You know, you don't you don't have to speak up if you don't want to. You're welcome to if you do. We're a bunch of lovely people in here. And if you are new, please feel free to subscribe if you like what you're seeing. I really do appreciate it. Right. Let's uh, continue on with this. I think I'm going to kill this pad, aren't I? But, you know, 
it's all in the name of what we're doing. I can get a reinker, and they're really cheap. That's the great thing about the Tim Holtz ink pads, guys. If you don't have them, I highly recommend because you're only buying one ink pad until obviously it completely gives out. Um, some of my ink pads I've had for about three or four years, I've not even had to touch them with a reinker. So make of that. As you will. They really are fantastic inks. Bunch of wrong uns. Oh yes, and please, yes, please do the thumbs up thingy. And if you want to leave a comment, leave a comment and ring the bell for all the notifications and all that jazz. It's uh, it is all appreciated, helping to feed the YouTube algorithm thing, isn't it? So I do appreciate it. <laughs> Why is Aaron calling you a bunch of wrong ones anyway? I hope I can afford to buy this collection Wednesday. Um, I hope you can too, Stephanie. I mean, it's a, it's a really good collection. I mean, like I've said before many a time on my, on, on my videos, is that if anybody knows me, they know that nautical, steampunk and fantasy, it's just literally shut up and take my money. There's no two ways about it. I kind of am a bit of a naughty one for that oh there we go Ooh! that's the that's the excitement you see i'm getting over excited and i know this looks a bit messy now guys but i promise you when this all goes together it is going to look stunning so, I'm just going to grab down some of my red liner tape. I'm going to see if I can find the thickest red liner tape I've got. Um, that one. I don't know which side. I, I appreciate you all too, honestly. Like I, you know, I've said it before, I'll say it again. If, if there's no you here, there's no me here. You are what makes, you, you are all what makes this happen. So I'm really grateful for ev to every single one of you for being here. I mean it from the bottom of my heart, most most honestly. I am so, so grateful to every single one of you for being here. Oh, we're all lovely wrong'uns. You know, if, if there isn't a you, there isn't a me. <laughs> so... Um, all I'm going to do on these hatched sides that you can now lovely, lovely you can see quite lovely because I've inked over them, is on the one side I'm just going over it with some red liner tape. Now all will become apparent when I finish putting that down, he says. I'm just going to trim that off. Right, and now to fold this, what, we, what we're going to do is end up sticking these two sides together like that. So I'm just going to fold and burnish. So that's ready to stick down. And I'm just going to take the back of this red liner tape off with my pokey tool. He says, whilst he grabs the pokey tool. Hopefully from the middle of New Year. Oh. Make sure you... Actually, I'm just going to burnish that down as well because it's not... I don't think it's properly seated onto the card stock. So I'm just going to pull that up and off. Oh, come on, you cheeky... You cheeky little bit of tape. <laughs> it's not wanting to comply. Let me just... Oh, oh, maybe I'll try getting it from the other end. Nope, apparently it doesn't want to work from this end. Aha! Uh -huh. Is that it? No. <laughs> Let's just try. I don't know what's wrong with this with this liner tape. Normally it's really good at just peeling back. The red part of it doesn't want to come off, guys. It would be nice if I had a thicker gorge of tape. Right, I've managed to get one. Right, so we'll just take that one off for now. 
and hopefully because we've got that one off the other ones will start complying I'm um Terry um are these dies available on tonic I'm not sure because these were uh, I bought these one second hand because I really liked them but it is worth having a look if not check eBay and you might you'll more than likely find them on there or maybe even um I don't know where you are Terry are you in the US or in the UK because if you're in the UK um I would try vinted as well because I know I've seen quite a few me thinks that might be operator <laughs> Yes, it was Hannah's birthday. It was Hannah's birthday, bless her. I'm, I know she had a good day. So, as you can see there, I've just taped those together and I've just folded and burnished that little flap there. So now it's in line with that main, with the main section. And all I'm going to do is just take that whole piece that I've just stuck together and I'm going to fold and burnish that so it makes that. So hopefully we're all with me. And then all I'm going to do is following the side that I've inked is I'm just going to fold and burnish the whole thing along the lines. So we end up with a little something that looks like... That looks a little something like this and then you'll see how that wants to curve you can see how that wants to curve and fold in and go into there and sit like that and you can see how that all then comes together as one bar so all i'm going to do is i'm going to use some of my collal glue hello betsy thank you for popping in I really appreciate you being here, lovely. Thank you so, so much. I am very appreciative. And then all I'm going to do is just pop that. And I'm going to use my burnisher just to get a little bit of friction so that the top and the bottom just kind of hold together a little bit. Because I don't want to, whilst we put that to the side, to dry off. And that's one piece of the frame already done. And then it's just a case of following those steps again another three times. I really should have done a few of these um, before I started. <laughs> but I just didn't really want to rob you guys of the experience of seeing it all kind of coming together because this is really like the first time I made it I was sat here and I was I was screaming at it because I was like how does this go together why isn't it going together goodness me what the heck is wrong with this thing or is it me what have I done <laughs> and it was it was all a little you know just like a smidgy little bit embarrassing when I kind of sat and figured it out and I was like oh I folded that the wrong way and this went the wrong way and <laughs> you know what I mean it just it, it, it all just got a little bit yeah, so hello crafty Stacy Lou I have the tonic gingerbread house oh that's amazing I don't think I got that one I can't remember I think I think the next um the next live I do is gonna have to be a tonic -y live I think because I really want to um I really want to uh, get some of those kits out that I got. But I couldn't resist trying to do something with this kit. Um, come on, you cheeky little devil. It's not wanting to part again. Right, let's... I'm going to give this a serious burnish this time. You're getting seriously burnished. I'm not, I'm not taking no prisoners. I'm giving that some right welly. <laughs> oh, 
Um, the instructions for this die aren't all that clear, but no, they're not. And I think that's where I got confused, Kim, to be honest with you. And it, it did take a few few attempts for me to kind of be like, oh, yeah, well, that's that's how that's meant to happen. I've made a, you know, I've done a bit of a frisbee. There we go. We managed to get one. I'm just really trying to catch this red liner where I can because it's not it it does not want to comply so I will stick that back down Gaz if you have have the tonic who has the vodka that that's not happening again <laughs> that is not happening again um right hopefully ah there we go it's usually it just takes one to kind of peel and then the other one's just or do what they need to do so I'm just going to fold that over as I did on the last one and I'm going to give it a right proper burnish and burnish and for those of you that may not know is just a posh word of rubbing it with a bit of plastic to make it stay <laughs> that's that's all burnishing is so there we go and I'm just going to do the same, pulling that little, that, that flap to line up with this side. And then I'm going to take the whole thing that we just stuck together again. And I'm going to fold that backwards to the inside and burnish that down as well. So we have something that looks like that. And then I'm just going to start at the other end this time. And I'm just going to fold over on the on the lines that have already pre-scored as such because the die is actually really good for that and I've had some other dies that do this pre-scoring line but they never work as well as the as the ones from the tonic dies don't ask me why I genu genuinely do not know but these ones always work the best I'm just going to actually take that from that side because I don't want to there we go and I am using very thick cardstock here guys this is 300 and I think it's 320 GSM and there we go and that just wants to automatically curve and we're going to just drop that in there line that up and pull that round okay so I'm going to make the other ones a little bit quickly because I've shown you how to um do them properly twice in a row and you're probably getting a little bit bored of me telling you how to make battens for a for a shadow box so I'm just going to pop that in there line that all up so it's nice and even give it a little bit of burnish to get that glue activated to stick because it is the kind it's kind of like the heat that makes collal glue set and once it sets it sets like blooming concrete I know a lot of you guys use it so that's two we've got ready I'm just going to try and push my way through these ones. I've been watching a few videos by Lou Collins, really inspired with the mixed media. Need to start looking at getting some Tim Holtz inks. Ooh oh, you missed out, Crafty Stacy Lou. I've just sold a bunch. I literally have just sold a bunch of them. Right, so some more red liner tape I really do wish I had the thicker red liner tape but every time I end up making one of these I did use my thicker red liner tape and now it's gone <laughs> so, it's kind of my uh, I'm the shadow box king <laughs> I wouldn't go as far as saying I'm the shadow box king I'm a shadow box addict Betsy most definitely my darling I am certainly a shadow box addict <laughs> There we go. I'm just going to give those a real good burnishing down again, just like I did on the other ones, because I don't want to. Uh... Oh, and this one. Oh, well, there we go. Look, that one happened straight away. Does this mean the other ones are going to comply? Does it? Does it bottoms? Does it bottoms mean the other ones are going to comply? Here we go. There. OK, well, I mean, that, that just did that to show me up because I said that it's not going to comply. <laughs> I feel like the Borg. <laughs> you will comply. Resistance is futile. Sticking is imminent. 
<laughs> there we go. I'm just going to give that a burnish down. So it's all nice and properly stuck together because we don't want it not being. I mean, I hadn't really taken a proper look because I normally, I'm like the oxide queen. I love the oxides, the oxides, 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 oxides. That's all I've ever been is oxides. And then I started taking a look at my distress inks, the actual ink, you know, the well the non-oxide versions and seeing like how more vibrant the colors can be i was kind of like why have i not done this before and then i realized the reason why i did it is because i bought the distress oxide sprays and now i want the distress sprays as well as the distress oxide sprays so it's kind of like yeah kind of making a rod for my own back <laughs> but you know it's all in the name of fun Gaz, what time is is it there? I always get it wrong to convert your time to EST, which is my, which is part of why I haven't seen your lives. Oh, well, at the moment it's eight o'clock here, and I started my live half an hour ago at half past seven UK time. But that is due to change. I think it's this weekend because we change for daylight savings on the 31st of December so we go forward an hour there we go just put that in there oh I was right it is it is this weekend oh I'm glad I got that right <laughs> I don't know if you could tell, but I have made, I've made one of, uh, I've made a few of these before in my life. <laughs> oh, December. Oh, thirty first of March, not December. <laughs> I am so sorry, guys. My little brain is about as capable as a hamburger at the moment. Oh, hamburger, actually, that sounds nice. Um, I might actually have to ask my, my glamorous assistant um, if they can fetch me a glass of water because I'm feeling a little bit dry. Hopefully he's listening. <laughs> Oh, fiddle faddle. I'm working nights on Saturday. Oh, no. Oh, actually, no. You want to be working nights that day because you get out of work an hour early. It's when the clocks go back. That's the annoying thing when you're at work, isn't it? That is the annoying thing. Oh, now I've sent me red liner tape on a mission. Right. Let's give that a good proper burnish again. There we go. Let's get in there with that poker tool. There we go. I, I'm, oh yeah, uh, I know this isn't exactly the most riveting content, but it is nice to learn how to put these things together. Because like, um, like, like it was said in the chat, is that, you know, the instructions aren't really that clear and you do kind of have to figure it out a little bit on your own. So... This is the fastest way that I've learned how to put them together anyway. Let's just put that over there. Just burnishing that down. And what I'm gonna do is just leave these to kind of glue together for the time themselves. I'm not going to um, put anything else onto them. I'm not going to glue the actual frame together yet. I'm going to do that later on. And I'm going to cut down a piece of watercolour cardstock so we can start our background. And we know how far red liner tape can travel. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, red liner tape is an, it can be an absolute little bleeder sometimes. It can be an absolute little bleeder sometimes. So now I'm just going to flip back round and come back in because if I try doing it all 
one way, it, it tends to bend instead of actually catching the line that it's meant to burnish down on, which is something I have done a few times when making this. So I try not to repeat the mistakes of my past with that. And there we go. Just going to give that some good glue. There we go. Wow, and it's, only, it's not taken me that long actually to put four of those together. I'm pretty shocked. The first time I did it, it took me two hours to make one of these. Right, so by the time you're done, you should have four of these, and I'm just, I'm not going to stick them together now, but you can see how these these tabs come down and they just interlock. I'll show you how they interlock. So when we do come to stick it together, you'll know how it's going to go. So they interlock like this, and I mean, I think this looks flipping fantastic. There you go. There's a good little... So they interlock like that. So when we do glue it together, we'll have something that looks a little bit like that. And to me, that looks like a frame that's been at sea. And from... You know, from what you saw me do at the beginning with the inks, that it when it just looked like an absolute mess, um, it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of come a long way as such. I think it looked that looks absolutely brilliant. I mean, that's not even that I've not even stuck that together yet, and it's holding together on its own quite well. So that's uh, that's going to be the frame for our box. Um, actually, what I was thinking of doing is just getting a little bit before I do put it to the side. Because I want to bring a bit of highlight to this. Just to the wood grain bit. And I'm going in kind of gently because I don't want to put too much of it down. And I don't want to put too much of it down when I when I get to sticking it together. Um, Rhonda, yeah, it probably would be easier to have put the red liner tape down before I inked, but um, considering who I am, <laughs> I didn't think about that. And all I... Let's put some of that back in there off my finger because I don't want that. I'm just tapping and I'm just going to give it a light sheen because I don't want it to be too much. Oh, hello, Michelle. Thank you for stopping in, lovely. Thank you so much. And there we go. I don't know if you can actually see it or not, but there's just a tiny little gold tinge in the in the wood grain. So there we go. I'm just going to set those to the side as I quickly clean up this uh, little bit of mist that I have made. And then I shall cut down my piece of watercolour card and we shall get to doing some messy inking because I want to do messy inking. There we go. Let's just get that off of there because we don't want that. No, not today. Off you can. Actually, I'm just going to give the whole thing because I think I've got some of the collal glue still stuck on here from when I was gluing those together, and I don't want that whilst I'm inking interfering with anything that I'm doing. So let's just get rid of all of that residue off of there. I don't want to ruin me inking. So when that goes together, that is going to have an eight by eight aperture that we're going to see. Um, where did you say you got the dies for the frame, frame from? Right, so the die for the frame, where have I put it? Oh, I just put it to the side there. It is 
Tailored Frame Tranquility from Tonic. Um, like I said, I bought this one secondhand, so I'm not sure if they've still got it on the store or not. But it's worth having a look for, even if you just have a look on eBay or Vinted or Craigslist or whatever. It's worth having a look for. So that is definitely a good die to have in your arsenal if you like making a shadow box like I do. Because I'm a bit of a weirdo for a shadow box. <laughs> right. So, I'm going to just get a piece of watercolour card down that I have pre-selected earlier on. Because, you know, I'm, I'm getting better at this slowly, you know. I'm getting better at this slowly. Like, if I'd thought about it, I would have had my guillotine right next to me ready to go as well. So. Hi, Ruby. My mum's making me watch this. Wow. <laughs> Oh, bless. <laughs> it's very good, though. Um, so the visible part of it is going to be eight by eight. So I'm going to leave this at eight and a quarter and I'm going to chop it down to eight and a quarter. So there's a little bit of a little bit of room at the back for anything to, you know, be seen or or what have you. I do need to get down a piece of my mount board. I'm not sure where I've put my mount board. I don't know if the big packies packet the big packet the big packet 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 the big packet is up there. Oh my gosh, the big packet of mount board. Oh my god, I'm going to end up bloody getting myself killed. Don't I? Right, so this is the big packet of mount board. I am so sorry. I lost my. I lost my, my words there. I'm so sorry, guys. So, so sorry. And I'm going to cut this. Hopefully, he says. I'm going to do it to eight and three quarters by eight and three quarters. So it's got a bit of extra back to sit on the... Um, on, on the back of the frame. So eight and three quarters. Just there. And I'm going to set that to the side, ready to mount everything onto. I'm just going to make sure that that square fits in there nicely. Yeah, it does. Right. So there we go. I'm going to bring down, I'm going to bring in my inks. So for this one, we're going to be using Evergreen Bow, Prize Ribbon and Mermaid Lagoon. Um, let's have a look at some of these stencils and see what we want to do um that is a bit see the eight by eight is great but the only problem is is it's not true eight by eight the eight by eight is the size of the stencil you only get seven three seven and three quarters by seven and three quarters so how am i going to make this work Could really do with a bigger um, eBay in USA cannot find it Facebook marketplace no luck either oh oh I'm really sorry I'm sorry Terry hopefully they do bring it back it's a really good it's a really really good die um, what I'm thinking of doing is I'm just gonna get some stick and spray to go on the back of this so I can Get it to stick to the to the to the card stock, and I think I'm just going to have to make it look a bit over. Oh, I'm going to have to overlap it a bit because I want this to kind of go edge to edge, or at least as close to edge to as edge as I can get it. Now this is not playing ball, <laughs> so I'm gonna. Try and kind of forcibly line it up. There we go. And I'm just literally going to go to town with the blending. There we go. And I'm just going to pick up the ink, tap a little bit off, and then I'm just going to come in and blend. Now, actually, that is blending in quite well. I'm just going to 
go randomly over the stencil in different areas with each colour because I want it to I want it to blend kind of nicely and seamlessly as such. I'm just gonna blend that out before it dries. But it doesn't matter if you do get a few um, blending marks on here anyway, because we are going to go over this with some water spritzing and we're going to give it all sorts of different texture to it. So just for now, I'm going to switch up to the evergreen bow. And you can see there what I've done, which is a bit of a mistake. And all I'm going to do is lay down a tiny little splodge of glycerin onto my onto my dauber. And then you can see how that is pulling that out. And because I've put glycerin on there now, I don't really want that going onto the ink pad because it will do terrible things to the ink pad so I'm just going to put the ink directly onto the onto the glass mat and do it that way and you'll see how lovely these colors actually blend in a minute right so I'm done with the evergreen bow Um, one second, I just need a cloth to wipe that bit up. I'm just going to pop that. Oh, wow, that's quite a strong blue. I didn't realise that was going to be that strong. Right, so I'm just going to put a tiny little dollop of that down. And I'm going to pick it up with my... with my blending tool and it is actually quite a powerful blue isn't it so I'm going to come back in after I've done just a little bit because I want to kind of make it go a little bit further than just that but don't worry we're going to see what the effect is now before Look at that. Wow. That's actually turned out really nicely. And then all I'm going to do is line that up on the edge there. I think we're kind of done with that blue up here at the moment because that is a really... I was not expecting that to be that strong. I was not expecting that to be that strong. Um... I'm just making that line up. I've just made that line up even, I should say. There we go. And I'm going to come back in because I want to tone a little that a little bit of that down in a minute once I've done the next section. So I'm coming in with a bit of evergreen bow. And because I've already put a bit of um, glycerin on there, I'm not going to pick up another bit. There should be still plenty in that dauber for me to get on with. And... I'm just going to find little areas to come in and do it is an absolute crying shame that I put that much ink down but it doesn't matter I mean it's a little bit of ink isn't it really and all I'm going to do on this side is just use the oh the it's nice the blue goes well. Oh, thank you, Lynn. I really appreciate you saying that, my lovely. Thank you. I'm just putting down the little bit of the mermaid. And I'm picking up that. And I'm just carrying on blending over this side. 
Now I've been an empty there and I've gone over into what I've already stenciled. But it's okay because there's no such thing as a... Um, there's no such thing as something going wrong. It's uh, just a happy accident. Isn't it really? But then some of this won't get seen anyway because it'll be hidden. So it's not, it's not a problem. I'm thinking I can, I can do something down there to disguise that. So it is fine. Right, let's just quickly wipe that up. And I love these colours. I didn't realise actually how much they were so strong. Because the last the the last time I used them, which was actually really a long time ago, they didn't really kind of work this well. But then I think that's because I didn't have I didn't have the glycerin that I do have now. Back then, so it kind of helps. There we go. I'm just gonna pop that on that corner and I'm just going to give that a little bit of a there we go <laughs> so that are those three colours done for now and that is our stenciled piece which I think looks really nice but I don't know if we should actually, yes, we can. We can come in with some of these stencils and just build up a bit of a, build up a bit of a background. What kind of colors have we got going? I think that would look perfect. And again, all I'm gonna do is just a tiny little splodging of glycerin and you'll put down a bit of that because to me that's kind of like the colour of seaweed and that's just going to be the starting colour and I'm going to build that up with a bit of peeled paint I'm just going to pop that oh. a little bit of peel paint he says when he puts down a massive blob that is glue that is not gonna that's not gonna help me move ink around that's that's just gonna ruin everything so I'll just put down a tiny little splodge of glycerin work that in pick that up and then I'm just going to And then I'm going to come in, actually, I'm going to come in with that one just over there. Just, I'm just going to try and line it up a little bit so it kind of looks like they're sat with it and not behind it. Well, it's going to look like it's in front of it. So, I don't really think I've got a stronger green. Well, wow. This is where we're going to do something absolutely terrible. It is. All I'm going to do is get my paintbrush, give it a spritz, and I'm going to take both of these colours and mix them into one. <laughs> and I'm just going to clean off my brush. I don't need that on there and I'm just going to use my blending my blending foam from my lighter from my lighter green to do that because it's made a cooler it's made a lighter green on there so I'm just going to pick that up and blend that right through Gonna do the same over this side with this. I'm 
There we go. And then I'm just going to come back in with the stencil, lining that up as best as I can on this side. And because I'm kind of done with that colour, I will remove what's left of it. And this is the best thing about these inks, guys, is that literally they will just blend together. They're absolutely beautiful. There's no worries at all. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of the, the peeled paint. Swap my swap my um my mixing foams because I don't want that to kind of go wonky. And there we go, we've got that. Oh, what's that? Yes, it's my four day week, uh, four days off. Yeah, cheeky trip to Cheltenham for your benefit, most certainly is. Um, and you know what? I think I'm just going to... I don't know what those wibbly... Does anybody know what those wibbly things are? Because I don't have a clue what those wibbly things are. Actually, I'm kind of thinking that that would look pretty good. I'm just kind of... Hmm. 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 He says, hmm. I think... We can use a bit of Twisted Citron on that one. I'm just going to pick that up, put a little bit of Twisted Citron down. actually quite nice just building this up with the stencil work oh it's a type of a it's a type of coral wiggly thing uh, thank you <laughs> thank you for that lovely there we go and then I am going to come in with that that wibbly coral thingy. Um, let's pop that back on there. And let's put that down there. I'm pretty sure I have a nice pink. Let me just clean up those colours that I've put down there for a moment. I'm hoping that this pink is going to be strong enough to do it. I'm just going to, again, just a tiny little splodge of glycerin. It really does make these inks go so much further. I'm just going to... Yeah, that needs something more right so I'm going to put down a bit of barn door which is a red and my pink flamingo not pink oh it's kitsch flamingo not pink flamingo I really am having a having one of those uh, funny moments and I right um and where was that paintbrush gone I was using to mix things together with I've put it somewhere. <laughs> I'm a danger to society, me. So I'll just use this other one instead. There we go. That's getting that all nicely put together. I'll just pick that up with my blending brush and go back in. There we go, and that makes those pink wibbly things a little bit stronger. And again, that's a great thing with the Tim Holtz Distress Ox, um, the Distress inks themselves, is you can pretty much get the same effects that you would with just mixing whatever colour you want. 
Wiggly fingers. Try the wiggly finger. <laughs> I think I did try the wiggly finger, didn't I? Right, so that's my kitsch flamingo. I'm just going to put that back over there. Clean up the mucky muck I've made. And I think we're going to be... Hmm, I don't think we need to put anything more at the bottom there, do we? And I don't really want to mess around with at the top. So, I will just clean up my stencil. Um, if anyone does have any questions, please do feel free to speak up. I'm more than happy to answer any questions you have. I should put that just there. And that's craft-related questions, because I know how saucy this lot can be. So, <laughs> craft-related questions. I really ought to um, correct myself there, shouldn't I? Craft-related questions. <laughs> there we go. I should just put that stencil back there. Right. Now, to build on that stenciling that we've done, we've got these die cuts. So what I'm probably... Oh, actually, there is something else I want to do on here. It's because I don't want it to look perfect. I'm just going to use my spritzer. And if you pull, if you have one of these spritzers and you pull on it gently, it actually is designed to make water droplets. Foiled again. So, all I've done is just put some water droplets on there and we're going to see what happens to the ink in just a moment. So I'm going to leave that to do some work because I really want it to do a nice bleaching effect. Um, I'm going to bring in a scrap of the watercolour card. Now this is going to be fun because I learnt this from Sheena at the weekend. So all I'm going to do is cut a few... Oh, can you wipe your mat? There's a bit of a reflection. Yeah, of course I can. Not a problem. Not a problem. I shall wipe that all up now. Sorry about that. So I'm just going to cut a few bits of these out. And I'm going to do the die cutting first. Because I don't want to ruin it before it gets die cut. So, those three, I think, unless you have some fronds for, the, for around the edge. I had a telephone call, so I didn't hear when the stencil was... Yes, everything was from the collection that's launching on Wednesday. The SVG files of a scan and cut is the SVG the only... Yee, I believe so. It is the only type of file that it recognises, Phil. Thank you. Um... Right, I just need to pop that back up there because it's in my way and it doesn't need to be. Um, and so does that red tape can just go over there for the moment. I need my low tack, high tack tape. It's low tack when you put it on, it's high tack when you take it off. Stephanie, it's good to hear you're doing better. Oh, bless. There we go. Oh, let's just move that over actually, because it's just pointing off the card a smidgy bit. And I don't want it to point off the card. So I'm going to come in with my Gemini Junior plates. And Gemini Junior. And I'm going to just cut these little lovelies out. Um, but I do think you will be quite interested to see what I'm going to do with them when they pop out of the machine. Pure pink is a strong, strong green, isn't it? So, for this frond and for those bits, I'm going to try and find stronger colours. So, let's poke those out. The great thing about this as well is that it is just literally a one poke and it's out type of thing. So, there we go. 
and I'm not going to take these apart I'm just going to run them back through the machine on the next piece of card that I put in hopefully because like I said this tape tends to turn into high tack tape after you put it through a Gemini there we go let's just peel that off there right so what we're going to do with this I'm just going to put down because I'm going to do this frond first. Well, I don't know if it's a frond or a little wibbly thing. It's a it's a little leafy type thing, so I'm taking it as a leafy type thing. So I'm just going to spray it with my water. I'm going to lay down a little bit of the ink, and I'm going to come in with my pointy brush, my favourite pointy brush. It is my favourite. Hi Mike! Fresh off the island ferry. <laughs> and all I'm going to do is just drop that ink and it should start pushing itself. If I drop it very gently Should start pushing itself around the die cut. How cool is that? <laughs> oh, hello, Kay. You popped in yourself, have you, love? Your generosity knows no bounds. <laughs> Bless her. And I'm just going to do the same thing, but with a different colour on the rest of them. I think that gives it a really, really nice effect. I don't know if you guys can see it. It will take a little while to dry, but it kind of gives it that, like, water scale effect. I really like it. So I'm going to do the same with my Kitsch Flamingo. Oh, if I don't kill myself with it first. And I'm just going to spray that entire piece and I'm going to pick up the Kitsch Flamingo and I'm just going to dab it on and push it around the die cut. Now I'm going a bit heavy on this, I really need to just wipe that bit up that's behind it. I don't think that this colour is kind of pig, well, it's not kind of thick, a dark enough colour to be seen. And this is the only pink that I have. So, I think it's going to be a little bit of a mixture of the Kitsch Flamingo again and the Barn Door. I'm just going to give it a little spritz and bring them together. It just makes a stronger pink colour for me. And then that actually looks like coral. And you can see that it's kind of pushing it around the die cut. These look a lot better for me. It's the, I think it's the light that's kind of um, being a bit of a saboteur on this one. So, because this one looks like it should be a green one, I'm just going to spray. I like being called a chick. It makes me feel younger. Yes, Michelle. Well, Michelle, you are a, you are a very young lady. You are a very young lady. Don't let anyone tell you different, my darling. I don't know if this colour's actually going to come up a little bit better on this one. But hopefully. You're going to be able to see it a bit better, if nothing else. There we go. 
it gives it a really nice watery kind of effect. And I'm just going to come back in for this one. Really, I should be cleaning my brush between painting. I'm just going to pick up this pink again. Give that a little spray. And I think, actually, I've done this on the, the wrong cardstock. But it's still giving the desired effect that I want it to, so... The water's still pushing the, the colour around to where I want it to kind of be. And I don't want it to be in any way, like, uniform. I want it to look like it's not so... Not so perfect. I'm not sure you guys can see the pink in that. But hopefully I actually pick up the right piece of cardstock this time and use that. Um, do, 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 do. Where am I with the cardstock? Because I put it down somewhere. That is not the cardstock I'm looking for, but that is. Right. I am just going to get my paper trimmer out. I'm just going to... Yes, I've got very mucky paws, but that's the ink in game, my darling. That is the ink in game. That's what you get for playing with inks, mucky paws. So I'm just going to do that to four inches, and hopefully on these ones you'll be able to see it better when I die cut them, because the um, the colour will come out and, and bleed properly. So... Uh, we'll just do it like that. It's going to make it easier, isn't it? I'm just going to keep those colours on the go there. Um, do, 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 do. Cutting plates. We need our cutting plates. So we're just going to do that. Normally, it's a good idea for you to stick them down. I think that tacky, that tape isn't as tacky as what it was when I first put it on. Right, so I'm just going to flip and rotate that. Because I didn't flip and rotate it. If you do have an electronic die cutting machine, flipping and rotating your plates makes them last a heck of a lot longer. No matter what, uh, what electronic die cutting machine you have. The one thing I will say is I have been 21 plus VAT a few times. That's all I'm going to say. I don't. I can't say anything for anybody else. I'm. I don't. Michelle, have you been twenty one plus VAT a few times? <laughs> um. Oh, let's see again. It, it it turns into high tack tape. It's so naughty. And now I need that pokey tool again. Right, there we go. There we go. Let's just pop that out. Mike, I've had to stop buying. Oh, Sylve, bless your love. Right, there we go. Now I've done it on the watercolour cardstock, it should actually give me a bit of a better... And I'm going to do one more. Uh, it's going to give me a bit of a better um, ink ink blend. Or ink run, whatever you want, however you want to call it. Um, I can get one out of the top there, can't I? That'll do. Because I want to make sure I try and get at least two of each out of this. Can I get that to come down here as well? Oh, talk about oh, talk about pushing that piece of cardstock to the blooming limit, eh? That is pushing a piece of cardstock to the limit. So I'll just stick that down. I'm just going to set that to the side for a moment because I really want to show you the effect that this is going to have. And apparently I've got I'm, I've got good reflexes to stop things like that from falling down. Right, so that way, that way, and that way. Right, let's give them all a spritz. 
And on the two ones that I want to be green, I'm just going to come in with the green. There you go. You can see how that colour's pushing itself around. It's just kind of bleeding where it wants to go. And I'm only very, very lightly, gently putting bits of green down. And it was this one that was wibbly, wasn't it? So I'm just going to nice and gently, just little bits of, just little bits. And then we'll see where it all ends up. What, what, um, Stephanie, I'm not using watercolours, I'm using my distress inks. <laughs> so these, all I've done is put the ink down, and you can just see here that I've actually put the ink down onto my glass mat. And I mi I've mixed two inks together to get that coral pink colour. And all I'm going to do is just dab that. Because these are a bit finer, they need a little bit more assistance, you see, so. Because they're a finer die cut. 21 plus interest. <laughs> Something like that. Well, that's gone a little bit pale, hasn't it? I think that's due to the, I think the colour's running out. I'm just going to give that a little bit of a helping hand as well. But hopefully if I pick this one up, you should be able to see the colour on it. Thank gals, I don't have inks, but what would I do that would have, that would work. You can use your water reactive inks if you have them. Um... I don't know if you can actually see the pink on that. It's very light. It's a very light pink. But I'll just uh, clean those up. Clean that all up for now. And I'll set some new colours down because I think those ones are starting to get a little bit dry. Um, if you also have aqua markers, Stephanie, those will work if you have those. Anything that reacts with water... You can use it. Oh, thank you, Terry. I'm glad you could see it because I thought I was going mad. <laughs> right, let's just quickly get rid of that. There we go. And I'm just going to pop these out. That was actually a very fine one there, wasn't it? We got it, though. We got the cut we wanted. It may not have been perfect, but we got a lot out of that cardstock, to be honest. I could have used that as a as a stencil as well if I really wanted to. There's always means and there's always extra ways to use the stuff that you've made or that you've got. Push it that little bit further. Um, right now, where is my pokey pokey tool? I have put Mr. Pokey Tool somewhere exceptionally safe, as usual. Oh, when I've knocked me camera, haven't I? Let's just straighten you guys up because you don't want to. There we go. You don't want to. I do apologise about the bit of squiggly movement there. But I didn't realise that it was all off centre. Sometimes I hit my head on the camera and <laughs> I forget to put it back. Because I'm an absolute numpty. I'm an absolute numpty. Right. Let's pop that back there. Because I'm done with those dies for now. So I will tell you which set of dies these were. In case you are shopping anytime soon. But I think these are really nice for building up that background. 
and they'll go really well with what I've stenciled out as well. So these dies were the coral reef dies. And I should just put them back up there for the moment. And let's get those colours back down to do. So I don't want too much. Actually, I'm just going to spray, spray straight on there and take my brush to it because it's just going to make it easier, isn't it? There we go. I'm just going to tap. And I'm not doing anything other than just tapping. And we'll see exactly what happens with the, with the colour when it dries. And I believe that was the same as what I've done for that one, isn't it? So just tap the colour on. I should have sprayed this beforehand but for some reason I didn't and that's probably because I forgot <laughs> so oh, numpty as I am right let's get that kitsch flamingo back over here where's my spray gone oh, forget me own head if it weren't attached to my shoulders you know that right guys Pure, oh sorry, what was that mic? Pure, pure coral goodness, yes. Pure coral goodness. It's doing really well actually considering That's a bit muckier coral, but that's because I used a green to blend with it instead of um, the red. But, you know, I think it looks really good. You don't want all the coral to look the same, do you, really? And it's not all fluorescent pink under there, is it? So there we go. Hopefully the camera will... Unfortunately, it's not the best <laughs> at doing that. I think it's because it's got the light built into it. But, you know, it's a, it's a really good camera considering what I used to have. It used to just, like, focus in and out all the time and it just looked like I was, you know, it just looked like the stream was drunk. <laughs> so, righty dighty, where is that piece of mount board that I cut? Because what I'm going to do is pop that and centre it onto my mount board. Oh, we forgot to come back for the... We forgot to come back for the faux bleaching <laughs> effect. There we go. Actually, I think I'm going to drop a few more. Drop a few more spritz. Thank you very much, Simon. I really appreciate that. Um, I want my arrow. <laughs> I don't blame you, mate. I could do with a crossbow about now. Sorry, no more drunk. Well, yeah, there's no no more of that nonsense. That's never going to happen again. That is never ever going to happen again. Not ever. Right. I know I left the other one a bit longer, but I just want to. There we go. I think that's quite a nice pull, actually. It looks really nice. Right. And then all I'm going to do is go on go in with my collal i'm gonna flip it over oh thank you simon um i'm just gonna flip that over I, I think i already read that comment i'm so sorry my brain is not really not with me it's not been with me for the last couple of days um yeah it's been a bit of a tough couple of days just a tough couple of days But we'll get there. Was drunk crafting not a success? It certainly was not. Right. So. There we go. And all I'm going to do is because this card has buckled a little bit. Is I'm just going to bring in my brayer. Because I don't want it buckling once it's stuck down. So I'm just going to go over it with my brayer just to even it out whilst the glue's still wet. And that should help 
stop it from buckling anymore. There we go. And now our side panels should be ready. So all I'm going to do is put a little glue, a little bit of collal on there and a fair bit of collal in there. And I'm just going to bring these together. Now what I normally like to do, I'm just going to move these um, corally bits that we've done out of the way. What I normally like to do is have that kind of pushed up against the back edge of the desk so that I can kind of help it sit flat together whilst I stick the other bits in. Uh, sorry Gaz, you were getting relegated to the phone screen so I can watch the local police on Channel 5. Oh, just because you might see someone you know. Oh, thank you so much. That's very kind of you. Um, I know how you feel, Gaz, sending hugs. Oh, thank you so much, Lynn. I really appreciate that, my lovely. I really do appreciate that. Um, that was a bit of extra glue, wasn't it? So we'll just try and get that to go in there because we don't want that sitting on the desk and ruining our glass mat experience. So I'm just going to... Now the little tab goes into the back bit and then you push. So now I've got two, two side panels in. I'm going to get that up to the top there. And I'm just going to let them sit like that for a moment before I think of putting the last one on. I'm the same... Oh... I'm the same, my thought process isn't 100% at the moment. Oh, I'm really sorry to hear that, Emma. So I'm just waiting for that. And then you see how these kind of go together is the tab goes into the little back part there. That tab goes into the open part here. And then you just kind of push it together <laughs> and hope it stays together. You are with good company. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think a lot of us are a little bit... <laughs> you've got to be twang rag with me anyway, haven't you? You've got to be a bit... <laughs> you can't be all there to be, uh, to be having anything to do with me, that's for sure. Right, there we go. So, I'm just going to put the last bit of glue that we need on there. The last bit of glue we need on there. And in here. And on there. And I'm hoping... I've never done it like this before, guys. So I'm hoping this is going to actually do what I want it to do. And actually hold together. I really need that die. I absolutely love it. I haven't had a decent thought process since 1974. I think the last time I had a decent thought process was 1998. So I've got a couple of years on you there, mate. I'm sorry, but... And normal is hideously overrated. So... Whilst that's kind of setting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, I'm just going to put some collal around the edge of this. And I'm just going to line that mount board up and hope, hope that it catches the glue for a start. Now normally I'd do a bigger piece of mount board for this but I didn't really um I didn't really think about it which I should have I should have but normally I do have a bigger piece of mount board that goes right the way around to the outer edge when I make these. But you can kind of see there let's see if we can get that to hedge the bets as I'd like it to. 
I don't remember all of 1998. <laughs> Thought process question mark. Oh my gosh. 1998, and I know a lot of you are going to crucify me for saying this. Um, 1998 was the first, was the year I went into secondary school or high school for you Americans. Um, I assume the ruler of the die is custom. Yes, so you can cut it down to whatever size you want it to be. Um, normally I don't stick it down with sellotape, but I'm just doing it because I need to kind of press on with what I'm doing and I don't want it to move. So it also gives it time for the glue to set. But it's not a problem. We can always come back and put a piece of cover paper over this if we want to. Who can forget Mr. Blobby and House Party? Oh my God, Noel Edmonds House Party. That is a UK TV show to you American lovelies. Um, and Mr. And Mr. Blobby was probably the well. I don't know. I mean, what would what, what what can you? How can you describe Mr. Blobby to people who don't know who Mr. Blobby is? Right. And there we have it, guys. The basis of our shadow box. I'm just getting rid of that glue off the grass mat because we don't want that interfering with what we're doing. And there we have it. That is the lovely beginning of our whatever it is that we're doing. <laughs> and I'm just going to, I'm not going to stick anything down yet. I'm just going to place it because I kind of want to see how it's going to, how it's going to come together. There we go. I'm not I'm not going to stick anything down as of yet because I don't really I don't really need to just having a quick meander of the corals so if we've got two of those there that means that we should have another one so I can do that Oh, actually, we'll put a couple down here because we don't want to use everything at the top, do we? So those will be fine up there. I'm just figuring out a little layout. There we go. So that's going to be a rough... Our rough little layout for the die cuts. Oh, thank you, Betsy. Um, I'm just going to. Um, what, we, what have I done with that die cut? That was the next one that I was meant to be doing. Um, let's just quickly pop those away because I did have a big die cut out. So let's just quickly pop these away. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm not doing too badly at them. <laughs> I really do appreciate everyone that's here. I, I know I've said it already, but I really, really do. And, you know, I also get that, you know, some people can't stick around for as long as they'd like to and stuff like that. So, it you know, any amount of time you're here spending with me, I am really grateful and I totally appreciate it. So, right, I'm just going to pop that to the side for a minute. And I'm going to bring these in. I'm going to do some stamping with the shells, and we're actually going to die cut this mermaid to go on in the middle of, a, of in the middle of our um, shadow box as well. So, for first thing is most certainly first, I'm going to bring down this lovely bit of a, I believe that is the watercolor card, which is what I want. And this is a different kind of stamping to what I normally do. So. I'm just going to pop these stamps down for just a moment as to where I want them. And this isn't going to be the final placement or anything because I'm, I'm going to die cut them out. So it will change. But I do want to get all of these um, 
all of these in. And let me just move that out of the way. And I'm going to move those coloured inks that I've used out of the way. And this is one of the strangest things I saw happen, but I really want to kind of emulate it at least. Um, us 80s babies remember the late 90s. Yes, we do. I mean, I'm late 80s. I'm late 80s baby. I was born in the 60s. Oh, wow. I think that was when... No, that was around then, yeah. 60s. That was a little while ago. <laughs> like, I think of 20 years ago, and I think of, like... I think, like... 70s, I, I, 70s, 80s was 20 years ago. But it's really not anymore. It's really, really not. <laughs> and that's terrifying <laughs> for everybody concerned. Where is the mermaid die from? That is the majestic mermaid from the Enchanted Sea collection that's due to release on Crafter's Companion on Wednesday, Betsy. Right. Now, I'm going to do these each in a different colour. So, for the big shell, I'm going to use my barn door. For the little conch shell, I can't... See, this was the thing I was having problems saying the other day, actually, was conch shell. I'm going to just move these a bit so that I can get a little bit of space between them and I'm not putting ink where I don't want to put ink. Um, for my conch shell, I'm going to use the Kitsch Flamingo for the swirly shell. I'm going to use, I don't normally like pulling out this kind of color, but I think it's going to look really good if I do it. Um, I'm going to use Villainous Potion. And for the last little shell, I'm going to use some Twisted Citron. Now, these are just the normal inks, guys. They're not, um, they're not the oxides. So these will give a different effect when I stamp. I'm going to use my little stamping pressure tool. And hopefully I will have inked these enough for them to have stamped properly and I don't, won't have any problems. <laughs> which I totally didn't ink them enough. But that's fine, because we can always re-ink them again. This is the joy of having the stamping platform, is that you can re-ink, it doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna re-ink, because they're all in exactly the same place. You're welcome, lovely. I'm glad to be of help where I can. Um, villainous potion, let's bring that one back in. And then it was Twisted Citron, wasn't it, for the the outer con conch shell. I can't believe I can't even say the word conch shell. And then I keep trying to say conch shell and it never works. It's just weirdo. Right. So, before we go, I'm just going to stamp those out again. <laughs> and hopefully we should have a full impression this time. Now this gets a bit weird because my table is actually a bit slanty, it slants towards me. It's because I made it from pallets. Well, me and my brother-in-law made it from pallets. Right, I mean they don't need to be perfect anyway because of what I'm going to do with them. So I'm just going to set the, that to the side for the moment. And put that there. Now all I'm going to do, and this is going to be a really weird one for some people, and it's going to be, yeah I already know that for others. Um, I need to figure out where I've put that blim blinking paintbrush. This is what I get, guys, for just kind of like wandering through my life as if I've got a plan and I don't really. <laughs> um, right, I'll just use this paintbrush because it's here. It's only a tiny little paintbrush anyway. It's not like it's... And all I'm going to do is just... I'm 
I'm just going to pull the ink. from where I've stamped to actually kind of paint the image and I'm not really putting any rhyme or reason to it only because shells are not perfect But I am trying my best just to kind of follow the follow it round, and then you end up with something that looks a little bit like that, which I think is really really fun. And all I've done is just literally just pulled the ink from where I stamped. And made it essentially watercolour itself hopefully we'll be able to get a better a better viewing on this this big shell because it's kind of got the strongest colour on it and I need some more water on that brush And this was something that I learned at the weekend. Which I think is a really, really good technique. And I'm just trying to stick with the sections of the stamp how it is. And I feel like it kind of knows how to shade itself when you do it like this. Because I'm not really, you know, I, 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 I'm not really putting in, like, the biggest amount of effort into this. But it's kind of like the water knows how to shade itself to make it look right. Which I really kind of enjoy. And there we go, guys. And that is literally just from stamping them. I've done nothing else more than stamp them. It's it, it's just, to me, it blew my mind when I saw it. But then I'm a bit of a, you know. Let's just quickly clean up that. Because I am going to re-stamp those again. I probably am going to want a good couple of shells to go on this. I may take a few other bits out and, you know, jush things around a little bit. But for now... Um, Die cuts. Die cuts, Mr. Mr. Die cuts. Oh, thank you, Lynn. I really appreciate that. It's, uh, they are a really, it's, a, it's such a brilliant technique. And not even just that, I mean, uh, what you see on the camera is not doing these justice. Because they do look blooming brilliant. They look absolutely brilliant. Just lining those up because we don't want them to go anywhere. And these are just things that I would never have thought of doing before, you know, going to the workshop that I did. It was really such a great experience. And, you know, there were, I don't really think I could, I don't really, it was positive, it's positive, but I don't really want to talk about it, um, because I know, you know, I kind of upset people with some of the things I say, so I don't really want to, I don't want to upset anyone with it. There we go, just lining that die up. I, I completely encourage you to try it. It is such an amazing 
like I said, you know, the you what you what you guys are seeing um is nothing, absolutely nothing in comparison to what um to what it actually is. So I hope you do give this technique a try. I'll take the 70s any day. Well, I can't really speak for the 70s because I wasn't around, but I'd certainly take late 80s, early 90s. It was a good time. Um, although, actually, do I really want to go through puberty again? I don't think anyone wants to go through that again. Imagine doing that twice in your life. Woo! No tar. <laughs> that is a big no thank you from me. <laughs> Gaz, you don't need to censor yourself if you loved it. Okay, well, um, it was really lovely because there were a couple of people there that actually recognised me. And they stopped and spoke to me and they were like, oh, it's, it, it's really nice to meet you. I saw you on the craft along or I've seen some of your lives and your, you know, and just some of the... Um, like the feedback that I got was just really, really nice. It was just absolutely stunning feedback from people. And, you know, it it was kind of like, yeah, I kind of felt a little bit like, I don't know, I kind of felt a little bit like a, like, you know, I was like a Z-list celebrity or something, you know? <laughs> so I, I kind of got a little bit embarrassed and then, I, I, like, trundled off and hid. <laughs> so. But, yeah, it overall, it was an absolutely fantastic experience. I absolutely would love to do it again. Um, and the things that, you know, you can learn from somebody like Sheena is just mind-boggling. Some of the things that she does. And you just think... I, I was literally sat there. I was like, I would never have thought to have, like, this... this 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 painting with watercolors i was a skinhead in the 80s and a mod in the 90s oh i don't know what a mod is um you may have to enlighten me on that i was only a kid in the 90s um but i do know what a skinhead is and lynn you don't have to worry because you are well loved by everybody in this community Please do not think that you are not loved for one second because you are. If you're here with me, you have at least one person that loves you. And I know I... I don't know. I shouldn't probably be saying things like that. But you know what? I'm going to. You have at least one person that loves you whenever you're with me. And that is everybody. Not just one person, absolutely everyone. If you choose to come here and spend your time with me and be kind and, and, and nice and everything like that, you will always have a place in my heart. That goes for absolutely everybody who's been here now or has been here before. absolutely every single person I will always love every single one of you no matter what and you can sit here and you can tell me my content shit and you can tell me I'm an ass, or you can you know I will just sit here and I will just I will just take it and we can always come back and we can always talk and we can always try and figure things out there is absolutely no end to the patience that I have <laughs> and the love because like I said before if you're not here then why would I be here there would be no need for me so there we go <laughs> and I'm sorry about the naughty swear because I had to kind of say 
had to say the naughty swear. <laughs> Get a little bit more of that water up. I'm just going to watercolour these in, guys. So it shan't be a moment. But again, all I'm doing is literally just pull, pulling the ink around that's there, and I'm not losing the definition of the stamp either, which is great. Um, I took some screenshots of the ton of that tonic die frame. Are you okay if I? Yeah, of course. You email it. You you do what you've got to do, sweetheart. If you want that, then you do what you've got to do. You do what you need to do. Absolutely no problem at all whatsoever, my darlings. I'm loving the fact that I'm not losing the definition on the stamp when I'm doing this. This is like the simply the this is really like the best part of it. I'm so Oh, I think I went a bit overboard with that one, but never mind, it's fine. Oh, I think that's because the top of that stamp got caught on the on the tape. You're welcome, Ter Terry. And you're all, honestly, you are all welcome. And to be dreadfully honest with you, I wouldn't like to think of anybody. You know, I'm I'm just going to be flat out honest. I have my mental health issues. I think every, you know, I think a lot of people have mental health issues. And a lot of people don't get the support that they need. So if I can be that support, then I will be that support. If you need to talk, I've got an email address. It's listed in my box, in, in, in the, um, in the, um, what you call it, box. The, you know, the box down below where all the comments go. Oh, wow, that's actually quite a good one, isn't it? Um, down there is an email address. Ask me at handcraftedbygaz.co.uk. If you need a question answering about crafting, if you have a problem, or you just feel like you haven't got anyone to talk to, just drop me an email and I will try my best to help you out as best as I can. I can't say I'll be perfect because I'm not. <laughs> I'll never be perfect. But even if I can just be an ear. I'm a crazy medicated New Yorker and honest about it. I'm a crazy medicated Isle of Whiter. Oh, goodness me, why don't you just sit back on that hook? <laughs> I thought, oh, I'll be all snazzy and hide things away under the desk so that I only pull them out and use them when I need them. And then it all kind of goes a bit to pot, doesn't it? <laughs> it doesn't quite pan out when you want it to. Right. Just popping that around there. Let's get that stuck down. I think a lot of us have mental health issues, which is what draws us to crafting and also draws us together as a community. It might be cheesy, but it's true. It's very true. Oh, my God, if I emailed you to talk to you about my MH, you would block me. Lynn, if you need a sounding board, even if there's nothing I can say or do to, to make it better and you just want someone to listen or just to read it, just send it. I will read it. Please do not think you are alone. Nobody deserves to think that they are alone. Not a single person deserves that. At all. Ever. So please don't be alone. Not when you don't need to be.
you know, there are there are all sorts of things going on for people. And if I can give you a big hug, even if it's a virtual big hug, then I will give you a big virtual hug. And I will tell you what you, you know, I'll try and help you as best as I can. Because I'm a silly cow like that. <laughs> Okay, kids, heading to Sue Yeah for auction to ruin the credit. Oh, great! Oh, thank you very much, Mike. You enjoy your um, you enjoy your uh, spending on fabrics. I hope you have a good one, mate, and I hope to see you again soon. And there we go. That's all of our different shells. I'm kind of thinking, I'm not sure if I actually want to use the, the, the mermaid stamp instead of the shells. Um, sorry, the mermaid stamp instead of the mermaid die cut. I will, I will pick up my pack and see if I can find her out. Crafting is such a great way of... Um, But uh, in contact with lots of this. Oh, that's brilliant, Caroline. Thank you so much for offering that support. Seriously, because, you know, there are a lot of people who do find it difficult to find a signpost for support. Oh, got kisses. Cheeky. <laughs> Not cheeky in a bad way, though, mind you. Cheeky in a good way. Right, let's pop that in there. Um, oh, let's just pop that down there for a second whilst I put these stamps away. Stamps ahoy! I should really have cleaned them before I took them off of that plate. But it's okay, because we can clean them off the plate. It's not a problem. Oh, there was that thing that she did with the... Because it's got the iridescent foils as well. You know those new iridescent foil things? I'm not sure what on earth they do. But I think it's something I'm going to have to have a look at. Because I don't know... I don't know what they do or how to use them. But it came with... Um, four rolls of this weird plastic foil stuff. I don't know if you can actually use it for proper foiling. Because I'd get the foil press out and use it otherwise. All right, let's pop those back away in there. A lot of crafters have helped me and I'll always be grateful. And you know what, Lynn? I'm sure they're grateful to you as well. I know I am. I'm very grateful to you. I'm very grateful to everybody just for being here. Because you've all done so much for my self-esteem. And building me up. It's, yeah, and I mean, that, like, again, that goes for everyone who's been here now, past, present. It's, it's something that, you know, I will always be grateful for. No matter what happens, I will always be grateful for it. And, you know, you can, yeah, it's something I will always, always, always be grateful for. Now, I'm not sure if I want to use this one or if I want to use, I'm not sure if I kept the entire collection out or if I put some of it back away. Oh, no, I must have kept it all out because it's not there. <laughs> do, do, do. One second. Please hold the line, caller. Here we go, here's the rest of it. If we use some of these, because there's a nice seahorse boy. And there's also, let me get these stamps as well. Um, I don't know if I can show it, I'll pop a bit of. We also have those stamps as well. 
I was thinking maybe I could use a couple of those mermaids swimming around in the background and have the jellyfish and the seahorse in the foreground. I think that's a better idea than that. So let's do it. I'm going to need another couple of pieces of watercolour card stock. But because they're only small stamps, I'm going to use small pieces of watercolour card stock. Why waste? Why waste big sheets, right? So I don't know if we're actually going to be able to get both of them out of this. Now I I said this the other night, right? There's one called a joyful joy a joyful jellyfish, joyful joyful, a joyful jellyfish, and another one called a jubilant jellyfish. I find it quite weird that they would be called that. It's like is one stung more people than the other one, or is one you know on a better meds than the other one? <laughs> you know, <laughs> the battery is mo. Oh, I'm really sorry that your battery's moaning, Phil. Hopefully it will last. So I'm going to stamp those two in the same style that I've done those um, done those other shells because I think it's blooming effective. It's really, really effective. I'm loving it. So you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Right. But I am thinking I'm going to have to. Oh gosh, it's half past nine. God, I've been rambling. And you sort of been putting up with listening to me. <laughs> God bless you. Right. Let's do the seahorse first. So I'm thinking. Well, for, mm, for the jellyfish. I'm going to use my broken china, so I'll go in and stamp that first. And by stamp, I mean ink. <laughs> so I'm just giving that a good ink. Oh, thank you, Lynn. I really appreciate it. And I think, actually, I'm just going to go with a nice orange for that seahorse because, you know, seahorses can be orange. So I'm using Spice Marmalade. Rio Lady Marmalade. Boom, 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 boom. Ourez-vous coucher avec moi ce soir? Ourez-vous coucher avec moi? Mm -hmm. There we go, and that's where I'm stopping that. <laughs> Before that gets out of hand. Out of hand. We don't want things to get out of hand. And I don't know where I've put my press. I've put it somewhere, so... I'm just going to use the age-old hand battering it <laughs> until it stamps. I think I'm going to have to re-ink those. They haven't quite inked perfectly. He's not got ink on his tummy and his mouth. I'd love to know how they come up with the ridiculous names for those inks. I, d I don't know. That was somewhat alarming. I'm glad it was alarming. <laughs> I can't... Uh, what colour was it? I used Broken China, didn't I? Yeah, it was Broken China I used. He needs a bit more ink on his body. Oddy, oddy, oddy. Love the singing, Gaz. Thank you, Ords. It's my... It, oh, I don't know what... It just happens, doesn't it? Like, literally, what I said earlier on, didn't I? That was right in front of my face the whole time. Gaz, in case it gives out before the end, would you... Yeah, that would be brilliant if you can, mate. If you can't, it's not a problem. There we go. Now, why is that not... I don't think I've inked it properly, have I? Right, well, the jellyfish is done enough for me to be happy. So, because we are going to colour it in anyway. I just want to make sure I've got a proper outline on the whole thing, to be honest. It's not above the shells you stamped. 
Oh, it was. It was right there, right in front of me, because I'm an absolute numpty. <laughs> These, this is what happens. Oh, huff on it. Well, I don't know if I should be doing things like that, Rhonda. It's only half past nine. <laughs> Oh, I've got carved pumpkin as well, but I've only got carved pumpkin in the other one, not in this one. Right. But I'm quite happy how that's turned out now anyway, because I am going to be painting it any regardless. Well, I say painting it, I'm going to be pulling the colour around and trying to make it look pretty. <laughs> I'll try and make it look pretty for you, so you all think. Right, let's just do that. Well, I did kind of go with this pale blue because I knew that it would kind of highlight the jellyfish a bit. A bit more so all I'm doing is literally I'm just bringing water into it to make it color itself in and hopefully you guys can see this when I'm done because it looks really cool because it's just the nice pale blue just kind of moving around looking cool I think this one's a lot more effective than the other ones that we've done actually. And again, I'm not go I'm not doing this to be perfect. I'm just cuz actually, I think the less perfect it kind of looks, it kind of gives it more of the texture that it looks like it scales on the seahorse. And every time I'm just doing one line of, of his tech, I just really like the texture it's kind of giving because I'm not really having to go in too much. And it's still giving it that really nice detail. Would that technique work with a sparkle pen? Yes, it would. Good night, Michelle. Thank you for popping in, lovely. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. There we go. And I, hopefully you can see the kind of technique that it's drawn the colour. Um, Caroline, for that to work, what you would need to do first, I think, is draw the colour out with water and then go over the top of it with the sparkle pen um we can do that so what i'll do is i'll just get the, get that to dry there are 46 species of Wow, who knew? Oh, that's not where I wanted to. There we go, that's what I wanted to do. Right, so actually I'm just going to use the the glitter on there. Oh, wow. Jeez Louise, thank you for that, Caroline. Seriously. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you guys will be able to see this on the camera, but... Oh my, that takes it to a whole nother level. Like seriously, I missed my meds with gas excitement. Oh bless you, make sure you take your meds lovely. I don't know if you guys can, if it will catch the, I've only done it on the, I've only done it on the jellyfish, but 
that sparkle. That's just brilliant. Thank you for your suggestion there, Caroline, because that, that works a bloody treat. Pardon my language. And they come in many colours. Yes, they do. And if you don't have many colours, you can just use the clear sparkle one and make your own colours. <laughs> Right, there we go. That's that one. Now, where's Mr... I do like the name of this, though. He's called a handsome seahorse, and he is really a... He is a handsome seahorse. I mean, that elevates that jellyfish to a whole nother level. That really does elevate that jellyfish. It looks so cool. So cool. I think I'm going to end up fussy cutting mermaids at this rate, aren't I? Unless I, because I'm not going to be able to stamp them straight onto that background. It's not going to happen. Um, <laughs> those are going to go no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Right. Um, there we go. So once these are done, I will do the mermaids, and then we'll put it all together, and that should be the whole thing done. I think this has actually been quite a technique heavy. Isn't it the male seahorse that carries the children? Right, there we go. We've got those lovely things. This is just amazing. I'm loving this so much. But then, I'm an absolute terror for anything nautical. Absolutely terrible. Terror. Absolute terror. Right, it won't be long until we will have this done, guys, I promise. And then you can all go about your, all go about your business, as usual. Right, let's uh, put that a few light sprays. And a little wipe off. Because I can't remember if I did. And I'm just going to get this put away quickly. Because the worst thing is, is that I will end up with bits and bobs everywhere and then I'm going where's me seahorse where's me where's me unicorn or whatever because <laughs> I get so excited in these lives I forget to tidy up <laughs> so it's probably best I do that whilst I'm going along right there we go pop that in there pop that in there Oop, alley up I think you're right, Gaz. That's very, very nice of him. <laughs> it is very nice of him. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that, Betsy. It's, it's, it, but I'm an absolute terror for all of this nautical stuff. I mean, you know that. Everybody knows that. I'm going to try and do my best with it. So, let's... Because I thought I had... Yeah, I had to cut those down to get them to stay in there. Because um, I'm terrible. Right, so we're going to do a couple of these mermaids. I'm thinking we're going to do a swimming one and one that's kind of stood still. Well, floating still. And I haven't thought how I'm going to get away with this because it's going to be a bit manic. <laughs> oh, I know. I could just use my paintbrush. I'll put the... Yeah. No worries. I will use the paintbrush. It's fine. I'll just put those over there for a second. I may be going a bit overboard with all of this, but I really like... Um... I really want to kind of show off the best that it it can be All right so 
paintbrush and inks. I'm just going to put a little bit of the kitsch flamingo down. The tail is where the embryos are incubated. Oh, wow. That would be a first love it, Rhonda. Oh, brilliant. I'm just going to pick that up and I'm going to literally... Kind of just paint the paint the colour onto the stamp where I want it to be. Now this isn't an exact science, unfortunately, but we will see what happens. One of two things will happen: it'll either work and look absolutely beautiful, or it won't, and I will be regretting the decision. Um, do, 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 broken china. I'm just going to mix that pink with that blue. I'm just going to put that on the scales. And hopefully this is going to look really nice. I'm going to do the same on this one. And it doesn't matter if this ink dries, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go over it with a little spritz of water before I set it down, which should reactivate the ink quickly. Just going up to there with that. And what kind of colour do we want the hair? I'm going to go with a darker, darker blue and a lighter green, and we shall mix those together. Oh, that doesn't look really nice at all, does it? That just looks rubbish. I'm not doing that. Right, let's just clean that up. You know what? I'm just going to. I've changed my mind. I'm just going to go down with a bit of orange. They can have orange hair. They can be redheads. Get that off of there. And I know this is a little bit time consuming, but I would like it to kind of look really nice. Right, we're going to see if this just reactivate in the ink. And hopefully we should have, in theory, two actually really good looking mermaids. Right, I'm just going to re-ink over her with some, because her hair didn't go down properly, so we're just going to re-ink her hair. And I'm going to redo her body because that didn't come out right. But I think, actually, even though the other one's a little bit watercolory. It's come out really well, all things considered. And the fact that I kind of ink them a bit free handy. Right, excuse me whilst I do this. It's not my idea usually, but it's the most effective and quickest way of getting it done. I 
and I don't really want them to be looking perfect anyway I don't think I think they look all right being a little bit blurry because I'm gonna I'm gonna ink just water them anyway so I'm gonna try and not water their hair but their bodies are gonna get a little bit watery Pop that to the side get some spray down there we go and I'm just going to No oh, sugar plums, I wasn't meant to do that, was I? Right, let's just clean all that up. Ooh. Let's just clean it up. Put some fresh water down. Do that. And try again. There we go. I'm just going to pull the colour out of their hair a little bit as well because I think it makes it look a little bit more ethereal, which kind of adds to them. There we go. And just because we can, because they do have that scaly body, so I'm just going to come in with a little bit of shimmer ink the bottoms of them so they look a little bit sparkly and there we go that's two lovely little mermaids that I'm gonna have to fussy cut but I'm really surprised that those um, that I could basically paint the stamps and have them stamp. It was that was really really good. one side now normally I would go a lot slower on this fussy cutting but I am trying to be a bit mindful on the time You know, you guys can take a lot more time in doing this than I am, because obviously you're not. I think I might have to start doing my lives a little bit earlier in the evening.
if I'm going to start doing big projects like this. <laughs> because it is a fairly big project. Oh, thank you very much, Lynn. Oh, is there not a die? No, there's not a die for the Little Mermaids, unfortunately. They are just stamps, so... Unfortunately, it is fussy cutting for me. Which is kind of, um... Something I really don't like. But... I'll do it. But I am kind of doing it a bit. This is rough fussy cutting. Should we say that? Normally I would go in and take everything out. But I'm just trying to be a little bit mindful on the time. Because I know it's getting late. can see that I can actually fussy cut it's not <laughs> it's just really difficult for me to kind of oh I think I went too far there there we go There we go, snips. Just going to kind of round that off a little bit. And there we go. I, I would have done a bit of a better job of, than that. Um, good night, Emma. Thank you for being here. I really do appreciate it. I know it's, it is getting a bit late for everyone, isn't it, really? Um, so what I'll do... Because she was swimming, wasn't she? So we'll have her swimming. And we'll have her sat there. And we'll have our big... Which I think we'll take some of those out. We'll take those out for now. Let's do the shells along the bottom first. So, right, let's start getting some of this stuck down, shall we? Um, call out. Let's use the colour to conch for that. I think actually given the shells that I've done I don't think I actually needed to I didn't need to do all of the little other bits and bobs that I've done advise using collal for this because it's going to get a bit but I do kind of want to make sure I build a scene before I go to bed let's put 
and no, we'll leave that one out for now. And we kind of do the same on the other side, so I'll just do the conch shell. Poking out like that. Let's just quickly move that along a little bit because, you know, but that's the joy of using the collal glue as well, is that you can do things like that. You could put the seaweed on the... F yeah, actually, I think that is what I'm going to do. Thank you very much for that suggestion. Building up the texture a little bit. Let's then do a very similar thing on this side. Need some Advil. Okay, Rhonda, no problems, darling. Thank you for being here still. I am really grateful to everyone who is still here. I know it's a, it's a bit of a long one for me. This is a... But I really wanted to do this project. <laughs> I think if I... I should, maybe next time I should prepare a few things off stream before I... Uh, before I go live, if I'm going to do a shadow box in the future. Just giving that a little bit of a move so it kind of fills it out a little bit more. And popping that in there. Hmm. somewhere to put that last little frond shall we i'm sure we can sneak it and in somewhere along the bottom here there we go swap that sides with that because then that looks like he's peering into the frame oh no 
Okay. And there we go, guys. I think that is a blooming good project. I think that one's panned out really, really well. And normally I wouldn't bring things out onto the, onto the frame. I'd like to keep it in the middle, but I think that's stunning. Absolutely stunning. So I don't, I'm not going to bother putting a sentiment or anything on it because I don't think it really needs it. But I think that we've done a really nice little project. I'm on the rosé now, says Sylv. Oh, bless you, love. You, you enjoy your rosé. Um, I'm just going to do a little bit of uh, shushing. Um, if there's anything anybody wants to ask whilst I'm still here, for you, please feel free to ask. Because I'm more than happy to answer any craft-related questions, as I've said before. Um... Please do uh, get some get some questions in whilst I quickly do a little bit of tidying. If you'd like to. If not, it's not a problem. There we go. I'm just gonna pop that back up there. Bring that collection down here. So I didn't actually show all of the collection on this live i did show it on a previous live that unfortunately i had to remove um for personal reasons and um, well for, actually because it wasn't very con i wasn't happy with the content so thank you very much for saying that <laughs> i'm glad you like it too um i'm just gonna Move that collection back out of the way. We're going to bring that back in here, actually, because I think you guys really deserve to see it because it is absolutely fantastic. Whilst I'm kind of darting around a little bit, <laughs> doing me, doing me little bit of housekeeping because, you know, you've got to do your little bit of housekeeping. That's no problem. You, you know, you do what you've got to do. I'm just grateful for you to be here, even if you lurk. You know, I'm just grateful for you being here. You're here, you're looking at me content. So, you know, whether you're, you know, whether you're busy or not, you're still helping me out. And I really appreciate that. So I'm just going to quickly get rid of those last little bits. I think that is a blooming brilliant project. I had so much fun actually putting that together, guys. Um, if nobody has any questions. Oh, I won't forget to stamp the back. Can't forget to stamp the back, can we? I'll do that right now. Whilst I'm thinking about it. Um, let's get the versifying down. Because I've uh, inked at the bottom there. I'm glad you've all been watching. I really appreciate it. Honestly, it means more to me than you could know. Just you being here. No, of course, that wasn't gonna. That may not stamp properly, but there we go. It's close enough. Um. There we go. And there we are. That's the lovely project done. Um, I don't think anybody's got any questions, so I'm just going to go through the usual gubbins as I usually do at the end of my lives. Um, this isn't a gubbinsy bit, but this is a genuine thank you to all of you for being here. I really do appreciate it. What you guys do, you know, like I've said many a time before, if you aren't here to watch me, then I there's no no me to be here. And I really appreciate you all being here. Um, if you do have any questions, there's the handcrafted by Gaz at .co .uk. Handcrafted by Gaz. 
handcraftedbygals.co.uk email address. Ask me at handcraftedbygals. If you want to find my Facebook group at the moment, because my fa my website is being built currently, if you go to handcraftedbygals.co.uk, that will send you straight to my Facebook group. Um, in the description box, there are a few links for that. And also, if you do want to donate to the stream, feel free to. There is absolutely no obligation to do so. Um, I'd just like to mention it because it helps keep things ticking over whilst I'm off work. And, you know, um, I will just say thank you all for being here. Have a lovely morning, afternoon, evening, day, wherever you are in the world. I love you all lots. And I will see you on Wednesday. Bye. 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 Oh, where's the button gone? <laughs>